so many titles. Girl, your resume is popping. <laughs> Rapper, social media personality, influencer, reality TV show star on BET's The Impact Atlanta. You are the it girl, Thank right? Thank you. You're the girl that everybody wants to know who you're hanging out with. Mm. Everyone wants to know who you're dating. Mm. Everybody wants to know what you're wearing. Yeah. You are that girl. And you're joining us here. Welcome. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, girl. Yep. You are out here, you know, doing the music thing mm. and, and, and trying to be known for that. Yep. Aside from all the things that people know you for. So yeah. that I respect. And that is what we like to highlight here. Yes. So you actually are talking about your music today. You put out an EP called Raw. Yes, ma'am. I want to talk about that because why that title? Raw because, you know, since I came into this industry, I've always been organic and just I try to give people my most authentic self. So, like, I had my first EP, Definition of Death, and I think the title Raw had to be next because... Of just the year I had, I just felt like I just stripped myself of everything and I'm just giving it to people raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of, how would you describe the year that you had? I learned a lot. Um, it was a very eventful year. I had a, I experienced a lot with my team, like not having a team and then rebuilding a team mm -hmm. and like kind of like starting back from the bottom for me, I feel like, you know, like I was refiguring things out. For real. And just getting back into my groove. It's so funny how we see this persona on social media sometimes. Mm -hmm. And people don't know, like, the behind the scenes that is happening. Which is why stuff like that is, is important. Because mm -hmm. on social media, you would never know that. Right. right? It's, it's good to hear someone say, look, I had to rebuild. Because we mm -hmm. all have those moments in exactly. our life. Exactly. It's natural. We're human. Right. Where we have to rebuild. So now you have this EP Raw. You've been rapping since you were 12. Yes, ma'am. So you had a little group with your friend Jada. Which mm -hmm. you guys are still friends. You yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. you know take over the That's social media all the time so tell me about that group what was the name of the group you know what were your roles in the group because 12 you know that's that's pretty yeah. big to start 12 a rap is group crazy. right <laughs> Um, the group name was Caution. It was four of us. And we was just some pretty girls just always finding something to do with our time. Like, I feel like we always had this independent boss mentality about us. And it's just crazy to, like, think about it because we were so young, you know, mm. like really manifesting our life today yeah. for real and like spoke so much into existence. So, like, I pray my kids like that. For real. You talking about kids? You don't have kids, right? I don't have no kids, no. <laughs> But when I do, yeah, I pray they be just like me, like, growing up, you know? Like, I always stay busy and put myself out there, you know, and did the things that people normally didn't do. Like, girls wasn't normally, like, making a rap group, going to the clubs, really, like, having rehearsals, getting in the studio, staying busy, doing something super productive that plays a huge part in my life today. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see what is happening to your life now back then like you and Jada and did, did you think you would be on the level that you are now no we never we never could have predicted this but like we manifested it though like in mm. our songs we was like me and my girls we like to splurge like we always like spoke that type of stuff over our life so I feel like that is why we live the life we live today because we spoke it over ourselves and just really like believed it when you're on social media, people are obviously in your business, but now you're on TV showcasing things and then people start things. How has that transition been from like, you know, going and do, starting to do stuff on the camera? It was a huge, like a huge difference, like a lot to get used to. I was very uncomfortable at first, but the reason I signed up to actually do it is because I wanted to give people that insight to show them like, Everything not perfect all the time, yeah. you know? And I feel like that's important for people to see who are also trying to, like, chase their goals and stuff. Like, everybody have hard days. Everybody go through stuff. Like, whether it's relationship, business, whatever. Like, we're humans. So I, I really wanted people to, like, see that side of me. Now, I didn't open up that much because it was so new and a, and a lot to get used to. But stay tuned for season two because I definitely plan on peeling back a layer. So that's on BET Plus. And the VH1 H now. And VH, okay, you were mm -hmm. getting right. And the Impact Atlanta. So yes. you guys have gone viral for a lot of moments doing mm -hmm. that, um, doing TV. Do you feel like that's something that you're going to continue in addition to your music? Or do you feel like it's supporting your music? I definitely feel like it's supporting my music because people get a better feel mm -hmm. of who I am for real and why I do what I do. Right. So the EP is called Raw. Um <laughs> I love Nanho. Now, no, Trina is the original baddest bitch yes, that the created. original. Oh, you know Nan? Uh, uh, yeah, right. Okay. So, the what you did with the song, I love. Because normally when you sample or try to redo a song like that, you can't mm -hmm. always get it right. Right. Because Trina has this sauce about her that I don't think can be replicated. Cannot. But you really did the song justice. Why Thank did you. you decide to redo that? 
Well, my manager actually like let me hear the beat, and when I heard it, I instantly like got this. I, it's like I love. I, I say when beats speak to me, like that beat really spoke to me, like the little mix of it. And it's one of my favorite songs. Trina's one of my favorite artists. Love her. Shout out to Trina. And when I went in the booth, I just was just talking off the top of my head, and it just all flowed so good. And it took me a while to finish the song because I wanted to make sure it was right. Yeah. So like I went in there, I played with it, I added some stuff, and then like a month later, I came back and like finished it. So mm. it was just a work. A bit a, a work in progress, I guess you could say. You write all your stuff, or do you, do you have people help you? Yeah, I write all of a lot of my stuff, but I do work with writers sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. how do you feel about like ghost writers? Um, shit, if it's the right song, it's the right song. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's about right. how you perform it. Period. <laughs> so Trina's actually in your Nanho video, yes, which is major. How did you guys get that together? Um, honestly, I just DM'd her because we follow each other on Instagram. And like I said, like, Trina is one of the most supportive females that I know, like, in my life, for real. And for her to have such an impact on the rap game, it's just, like, good to have that as an artist. Like, somebody I can, like, DM. If I can ask her, like, call her, pick up the phone. If I got a question about this and she would just give me an honest, genuine answer. But, yeah, I DM'd her. And she was like, hell, yeah, I'll do it. You know? Like, it was a no-brainer. We set it up. And she, she pulled up looking fabulous, and that's what happened. I love Trina because she embraces up-and-coming artists, and she yes. does it consistently. Not, consistently. Right. like She just had a festival February yeah, 11th, that. and it was just all up-and-coming artists like performing. So are you going to do a remix? Or I know the song just kind of came out, mm -hmm. but are you thinking about that yet? I, yeah, my team said I should. So, yeah. yeah, that's definitely something that I am thinking about. Your ideal Nanho remix. Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, Your I ideal. It doesn't mean it's happening. It's just, I, you know, if you can like pick who, anybody in the world, who would you put on it? Trina. <laughs> Trina. <laughs> right. Yeah, I would definitely put her on it. She's going to spin it. So you have your EP Raw out right now. Yes, ma'am. It's an independent venture, correct? I have a um a distribution, but distribution. It's independent, yeah. So talk about that because you're so popular on social media, mm -hmm. but then now you're into going into the business of music. Mm -hmm. So does that popularity transition over as an independent artist, or do you feel like that's somewhere you still need to grow? Um, honestly, I feel like I'm growing every day. I feel like I gain new fans every day. You know, you got to turn people into believers sometimes. Mm -hmm. So like all of my, all of my followers probably don't see me as an artist or, you know, but that's why I keep grinding and just keep putting myself out there. I feel like it was a, another venture for me. I, my platform definitely helped, but I do feel like it's, I'm always growing, you know? Yeah. I think this is an important conversation to have because people think that social media influence means that mm -hmm. people are going to be tuned into what you're doing right. outside of social media. Right. And that sometimes is a struggle. If you're doing something, they might not be all the way like locked Tap in. in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it definitely takes some work. It's not automatic. People always say like, work. Oh, this person got this social media following. Mm -hmm. Okay. Following doesn't mean influence. It, <laughs> okay, you just said a word. <laughs> Following does not mean influence. <laughs> right. So can you influence people to do something rather than just watch what you're doing? So you got to put in the legwork. You and... got to put in that legwork. You got to make people believers, you know? You got to keep putting yourself out there. And that's what I do every day. That's what I've been doing since I was young, unintentionally. Like, I've, I've always had influence. Not even, like, to sound cocky, but I've always had it. Yeah. So uh, we f do follow your personal life. Now, you have dated Future. We've seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. I wonder, was it difficult to date someone in music when you're coming up and doing your own music? Honestly, it was the most beautiful thing because, like, I really you could really learn from the situation, mm. you know? Like, dating an icon such as Future, like, he taught me so much when it came to music and business and everything just surrounding that. Like, I'll forever appreciate that, for real. You ever been in the studio and you were like, Wow. Like watching him record is crazy. Yeah. I was always inspired every time. Always. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Now you are also a really good gift giver, girl, because you gave him a diamond encrusted chain with the photo of his mama in the middle. His and grandma, I was his like, grandma. His grandma. <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta do that. So I wanna know what's the best gift you've ever received? Um, the best gift I ever received was um it was a yellow diamond ring. It's the November birthstone. Mm. And yeah. why was that special to you? Because I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Scorpio. Uh, so who, what's your ideal studio session? Because we talked about you being in the studio with him. Mm -hmm. Ideally, who would be in the booth with you while you're creating? 
Um, I honestly don't like too, 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 too many people in the room. But if I did have one of those nights where it was just a lot of people, it got to be my friends, like people with good energy. You mm-hmm. know, we're going to have a bottle. We're going to turn the lights. I like the lights like damn near off mm-hmm. just to set the vibe, a couple candles, a bottle. And, you know, that's how we going to get it working. Any producers that you really want to work with? Artists? Um, I've worked with a lot of great producers. One of my favorite producers that I do like to work with currently is Ben Boy. He's like super super good like he's super versatile like he gets it and um he actually produced like my second song he he produced my first ep so yeah i like band boy band boy is hard an artist that i would love to work with would probably be janae love Uh, janae yes yes she's just like a healer she has this energy about her i love her i used to tell everybody the only thing i want for my birthday is janae tickets (laughs) so when she go on tour i will be there front and center (laughs) I love that you said that because she is very calming and healing. This is a lot about your personality. Mm -hmm. But you're a Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So y'all be calm, but then y'all don't be calm. (laughs) That's the thing, you know? You never know which side you're going to get. So how do you keep things private? Because your your life is becoming very public outside Mm -hmm. of social media. I think the reality show really opened up a can of worms for you and your friends. So Mm -hmm. how do you maintain privacy? Um, You just got to kind of like set boundaries. You got to know... Like, you got to be very intentional with what you're doing. And I feel like that's how I, like, keep my privacy. I know, like, what is absolutely no for me, like, that I'm not going to share, you know, certain things. But, like, for the most part, I kind of want to give a little more so I can be more personable, you know, and people can really feel like they know me because right now people just got this idea and it's like they don't really know who I am for real. So that's that's why I'm doing it. So I can just open up. They get to see my family. They get to see like the background stuff and all of that. But I do keep certain things private. What do you think is like a common misconception about Dusty or? That I'm, a, can I curse? Yeah, you can. Uh, that I'm a bitch. Because <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually like one of the sweetest people like ever. But because I don't really show my personality, People just go off like my facial expression, expressions and stuff. But I don't mean no harm. I mean, that's a word that they use on any woman who has any kind of yeah, they say like, attitude or, yeah. you know. But I just be chilling for real. I honestly really just be chilling. And I'm a thinker. So, like, sometimes it just show on my face that I'm just in deep, deep. I'm always in deep thought. Like, yeah. I could be having, having a conversation in deep thought about something in the back of my head. You know what I'm saying? So, like. When I, like, maybe, like, sitting on the stage, like, for instance, when I did the reunion, I'm just, like, in my head just thinking about stuff. And people like, why is she just, like, you know, so, I don't know. But right. Whatever. So there's a lot of up-and-coming female rappers. What do you do to cut through all that talent? Because it's an amazing time mm-hmm. for female rap. There's so many. But you coming up in this era, like, what do you think sets you apart? And how do you cut through all the stuff that's going on and all the different artists that are out there? I feel like you got to be authentic, you know, find your niche. Never try to ride somebody else's wave. Like, do what feel good to you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't never try to ride nobody's wave, you know. Like, I always do what Des want to do. I wear what Des want to wear. I talk how Des want to talk, you know. So I think that's what separates me. Okay, Big Boss Des, you better Period. talk that talk. On that <laughs> note, <laughs> the EP is out right now. It's called Raw. Uh, Nan Ho is out, hopefully with a remix you know yeah. soon mm-hmm. and then BTVH one's the impact Atlanta thank, thank you, you for stopping by thanks for having me how can people reach you they should already know but go ahead but if you don't know <laughs> you know you can follow me on all my social media platforms the number one Des Dior sometimes it's an underscore in the front so don't be scared to add that you know subscribe to my YouTube channel like watch the day in the life for Des and yeah love it you're a out love it